do we refer to our two court, two systems of courts? Ten Mississippi. To do the fourteenth. Um, All right, Secretary of State. Secretary of State deals with everything outside of America. Deals with everything outside. Okay, so today we are going to talk about what it means to be a citizen, who is and who is not a citizen, and the process of becoming a U.S. citizen. Now, we have a strong tradition with citizenship in our country because, let's face it, we are a nation of immigrants. Sometimes referred to as the Great Melting Pot, our ancestors all started out at some point coming here from other countries. That Statue of Liberty with the inscription, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, is a dedication to our immigrant past. Now, one of the issues we have faced in our country is that who was and who was not a citizen has changed over the years. Can you spot the citizen in that painting? Yes, there's only one. And he only would have been a citizen if he owned property. Now, I assume he did because he could afford to have a painting done. But yes, there's only one citizen in there, and I think you know who it is. Now, this leads us to our first benchmark. And again, this is for Florida students, but almost every state that teaches civics or government has this same benchmark. And it is define the term citizen and identify legal means of becoming a United States citizen. Our sub benchmark for this is to identify that a citizen is a legal resident of a country and recognize that people become citizens by birth or naturalization. Now, they kind of gave us a definition for citizen, right? A legal resident of a country but we're gonna need a better one for that. And the subset of the benchmark also kind of answers how people become citizens. Again, it says by birth or naturalization. Now, there's a word, naturalization, that we are most likely unfamiliar with. So, note to self, we need to find out what naturalization means. Uh, okay, our essential questions, and this is kind of for you and your teacher, but I would write down, and, and this kind of goes for the whole presentation, the whole video. If you're taking notes, if this is the first time, pause and write it down. I highly recommend writing this stuff down. Uh, so just real quickly, our essential questions. What does citizen mean? Who is a U.S. citizen? What is the citizenship process in the U.S.? And uh, the final essential question, what are the obligations of citizenship? We're going to go over that in the next video. Your key terms, these will be highlighted in red. These are the words you absolutely need to know. Uh, citizen, 14th Amendment, naturalization, alien, immigrant, Law of Blood and Law of Soil. Okay, so one of the problems the U.S. faced in its early years in figuring out uh, who was and who wasn't a citizen is that our beloved Constitution didn't tell us. You're going to learn a lot about the U.S. Constitution this year, and it's kind of like a rule book for the U.S. government it didn't define who a citizen was, and this would lead to problems, and this would lead to an ever-evolving um, definition of who was a citizen, okay? The U.S. Constitution, as written by the framers, and that framers, that's a word we're going to be using this year, um, uh, for the most part, we're talking about James Madison, the framers used the word citizen something like 14 times without actually defining it. Now, I usually teach my students um, a Supreme Court case known as Dred Scott versus Sanford. 
All right. However, I learned last year that it's not necessarily gonna be on your end of course exam. And of course, my, my students always say, oh, why are we learning it if it's not on the exam? Well, it's a great example of this problem of our lack of definition for citizenship, all right? Um, quickly, Dred Scott was a slave whose master had taken him to live in Wisconsin and Illinois. And um, at the time, America was divided into free states and slave states. You'll learn more about this in your U.S. history class. Um, but when his master died, Scott sued for his freedom on the grounds that when he was in these northern states, he should have been set free. Long story short, um, Scott lost his case. And the reasoning the Supreme Court in this horrible decision was that Scott was not a citizen. As crazy as this sounds, he was considered the property of his new master, and therefore he could not sue for his freedom. So this case really demonstrates this weakness of the fact that the Constitution didn't define citizenship. Unfortunately, it would take one of the bloodiest wars in U.S. history, in fact, the bloodiest war, for us to solve the problem of citizenship. Um, in 1868, three years after the end of the Civil War and the demise of slavery, we have the passage of the 14th Amendment. And you're going to learn a lot of amendments this year. The 14th is absolutely one of my favorites um, for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, because it defines citizenship. It defines citizenship as all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Okay, so we see in this definition that all persons born in the United States are citizens, but we still have that word naturalized and we still need to figure out what that means. Okay, so let's get a definition for citizen. Again, this is one of our first key terms, so make sure you write it down. The dictionary defines a citizen as a legally recognized member of a nation, either native or naturalized. Okay, and that's a pretty good definition, but here's what our textbook says. Um, a citizen is a community member who owes loyalty to the government and is entitled to its protection. Now, this is the definition we want to use because your test is going to want you to focus on two things, on that loyalty part. So you're giving back to the country your allegiance, your loyalty, as well as the fact that you're getting something back. And that thing that you get back is protection from the government. Okay. So while we're talking about who is a citizen, Let's look at who is not a citizen, okay? And first and foremost, we are talking about aliens. No, not that kind of alien. We're not talking about E.T. We're talking about those who work and live and visit the U.S. temporarily, okay? Now, if those people are planning to stay, they are known as immigrants, legal immigrants. Legal aliens who are going to stay are known as immigrants. Um, one thing that's kind of a highly contentious, controversial issue in America is illegal immigration. Okay, so let's make sure to write this down, and I would write it just like it is on the PowerPoint. Um, there are two ways to become a U.S. citizen which we already said, but natural born, also known as native born sometimes on your exam, and naturalized, right? We went over that, but let's write it down again so we have it in our brains. Um, you are either natural born or naturalized. Um, there are two ways further to be natural born, AKA 
native born. And those are law of soil and law of blood. Again, those were two of our key terms, so we need to know what those are. Okay, law of soil, AKA jusoli, that's what it says in Latin, and it's always good to know your Latin. Uh, anyone born on US soil is automatically a citizen. And um, occasionally, we get some people who even try to argue about this. I've got another link down there to a video about women from China who come here to give birth so that their children can become US citizens. It's probably not a huge problem, but it's something to think about. Okay, law of blood tells us that a baby born in another country is still a citizen if they are born to a US citizen. Okay, so if your parents are citizens and say you are born in Spain, you are still a US citizen. So let's look at the other way of becoming a US citizen and that is naturalization. Now let's write down our definition. Naturalization is the process of becoming a US citizen. And you need to know <clears throat> the qualifications. So I would write these down. I recommend maybe using a web diagram uh, because you're gonna have to memorize them, okay? You must be, in order to become naturalized, at least 18 years old, a lawful permanent resident, have lived in the US for five years, be of, quote, good moral character, and no basic English. Okay, so let's look at those a little bit further. Now, to be a lawful permanent resident, you have to have come here legally, okay? You would have had to come and get what's known as a visa and permission to live here, okay? Um, further, when you get here, the part about be of good moral character, basically what that means is you don't want to break the law, okay? You want to be a good citizen. If you break the law, maybe if it's just speeding or something, they might let you stay, but you don't want to get caught doing something serious. Okay, now um, you have to memorize the steps to naturalization. All right, and I usually have my students make a flyer on naturalization with the sequence of the steps. So let's look at our first step. We looked at that already. Live in the U.S. for five years, okay? Um, while you're put writing your steps, you might want to draw little pictures of these. Fill out an application. That's something that usually comes early in a process of becoming a member of something, okay? So you want to fill out your application first, and then... <clears throat> you have to get your fingerprint and background check, okay? They want to make sure you're a good person if you're going to stay here. Our next step is the interview, okay? During the interview, and this is a kind of all one step. We see the picture of the woman there being interviewed. Um, you have to pass a civics test, and you also have to pass a test to make sure that you can speak kind of basic English, okay? Uh, the civics test, maybe some of you know someone who's gone through this process, all right? The class you're taking right now would be a great way to pass that civics test. Maybe some of you have not become or are going to become citizens later on. Um, the last step, and maybe you've seen pictures of this, is to take what is known as the Oath of Allegiance. The Oath of Allegiance, when you walk into that room, you are a legal resident. And when you walk out, you are a citizen. So if you're trying to memorize your steps and they give you some choices, and one of them has the last step as take the oath of allegiance, that is your answer, okay? That is the last step. Now, technically, they send you documentation showing that you are a citizen, but really for us on our test, the last step is to take the oath of allegiance. Okay, so that's it for our benchmark. Um, I hope you learned a little bit here. 
okay? I have a whole bunch of practice questions at the end of this PowerPoint. So again, there's a, a plug. Hopefully your teacher has gotten a hint to pick it up. It's only $1.99. And I hope you learned a little bit. Um, if you keep up your work, you are all gonna ace that EOC and uh, whatever else test you're taking. So I wanna thank you for listening and watching.